Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to try to turn this nested set of bowls. This is a curly maple, so there should be some really nice figure in this. Uh, I really want to keep the bark on this wood if I can. Uh, the trouble is it's actually separated in a few spots. In these areas here, I've actually put some CA glue and walnut dust in there to try to fill the cracks. And in this one here, almost half, almost half of the bark and on the entire surface is coming off. So what I might do with this one, and the, and the same thing with the small one, quite a bit of it's coming off. I'm going to try to cut it and then re-glue the, the bark right back onto the piece before I rough turn these. So these have been cored out with my one-way coring system. So it, it, this has all come from the same piece of wood. So it should be a pretty interesting project. Stay tuned. The first problem I had was uh, I wanted to retain the bark on these because it looked pretty good. But on the two smaller pieces, the bark was almost completely off on the entire half of, of the piece. So rather than try to put CA glue here, I actually took that whole bark off and I'm just going to glue it back on so it stays on more permanently. So that was the medium sized piece. This is the smallest piece and it had the same problem. The larger piece in the background that you can see, the bark was only loose in a few areas. So in that case, I just filled it with some, uh, some wood, wood dust and put some CA glue in for the largest piece. I did consider just using some yellow carpenter's glue, but in this case, I, th I think the using epoxy would be a lot better. So I just used some epoxy, colored it brown, and then I put some thickener in it so that it wouldn't run too much. So that's kind of the solution I used to try to glue that bark back on. This is the first time I've tried to glue a piece of bark on. Normally I probably would have just taken the bark off the entire piece. So we'll see how this works out. So after I put the bark on, I just took some, uh, some wrap that movers use. It's just a, a thin a wrapping material and uh, I used it to, uh, to basically secure the bark on there because I didn't really have any other way of clamping the bark down and that seemed to work pretty good. Well now to see how it turned out. It actually doesn't look too bad. The epoxy didn't really hit the top of the bark and it closed the gap pretty nicely all the way around. So I don't think it'll be that obvious what I did in the, in the final product, which is what I'm looking for. I don't want it to be obvious that I glued the bark back on. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with the results. And I'm just going to carry on and turn it as if the bark was solid there.
I'm just going to start the small piece between centers and put a tenon on it and just turn the, uh, the bottom end of the bowl here. I'm just using a half inch bowl gouge to, uh, to clean up the bottom. And the epoxy is uh, cutting fairly cleanly, so I'm pretty happy with it. Just going to move the camera a little bit here, and you can see I'm using a skew as a negative rake scraper just to take off any little high spots that uh, that I was not able to get with the gouge. This does a really nice job. Looks like that epoxy filled in really nicely in the bark. You can hardly notice the difference. Now for the medium sized piece I'm using a jam chuck and basically the same situation here. I'm going to create a tenon and uh, profile and cut the, the bottom of the bowl out here. The largest piece, which is around 14 inch diameter, has a really large base on it. So I'm actually going to use a dovetail in the bottom of the base and then try to retain that, uh, that part of the base and, and get the full, full depth. Okay, because it's big enough that I can just blend it in to the final shape. Here you can see that the piece has a little bit of a foot that it's going to sit up on. So I think that'll work well with, with this size of piece. I did have to do a little bit of extra filling on this larger piece because this is the one I did not use epoxy on. So I'm just putting some walnut dust into the crack after I've turned it and uh, just applying some CA glue and trying to fill it as best I can so that it looks good and that it's also going to be retained and it's not going to fall, the bark's not going to fall off as I'm turning it.
The next step is to turn the inside of the bowl and you can see here that I'm using the tailstock for extra support. So whenever I can, I think it's just safer to try and have that tailstock there. And then of course when the tailstock's in the way for my cuts as they get deeper in, I'll just move the tailstock away at that point. But by then, the piece is going to be fairly balanced and I'll just take light cuts. So much less chance of the, the piece coming out of the chuck that way. And with the medium piece, I'll do the same thing, turn it down in stages, and then uh, I'll use the negative rake scraper if I need to, in little areas where there might be some little lines that I just wasn't able to get with the gouge. If you're enjoying the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thanks a lot. There was another little area here in the very bottom that needed to be filled, a little crack. So the easiest way to do it was actually take the piece off the lathe and then uh, use my walnut dust again because it was in a little knot. And just drop the CA glue in this way and that way it doesn't run down the side of the bowl. And because all the turning was done already, to just take the high spots off from the CA glue and dust, I'm just going to use this negative rake scraper. Sanding these live edge bowls always is a bit of a challenge. I can't have it spinning for the outer edges, so I have to sand all those outer edges by hand with, with the drill, so it's power sanding, but it's still a little bit more labor intensive than a regular round, completely round bowl. Now this wood is figured, it's figured maple, so there's some beautiful lines in it, and to accentuate that, I'm just going to dye these pieces blue and you know I start with a light dye but I'm going to progressively make it darker here you can see that uh, after two two or three applications of the dye it's it's penetrated a bit and I've sanded in between the applications now is really just the stage to uh, remove the the tenons on the bottom and just complete the very bottom of the bowl Once I get down to a small area, I'm going to turn on my vacuum system and now the piece is just held onto the vacuum chuck and I can completely uh, cut away the bottom surface, get it undercut and, uh, and then sand it. And I'm going to finish these pieces with one of my favorite finishes, which is, which is general salad bowl finish. 
and it's going to need three, at least three applications because the uh, the finish is soaking in quite quite a lot into into the piece. And that's it. So stay tuned. I have some images of the final pieces coming up.